And, you know, what I have discovered in being in the business for 15 years now, Cody, is like any other business, what worked a year ago might not be working so well today. What worked so six true. years ago might not be working so well today. Or in addition to that, there might be a brand new strategy or resource that's really hot and is working really hot today that didn't even exist six months or a year ago. So I say that to ask you this. What are one or two or three, whatever you feel like sharing, what are one or two or three of your hottest resources, places, strategies, whatever, on finding motivated sellers that make a great real estate investing deal? Whether you wholesale it or you stay in the deal or not. I mean, that's one thing I've learned, Cody, whether you wholesale it, no matter what your exit strategy is, you're going to wholesale it, you're going to stay in the deal, you're going to wholesale it, it doesn't matter, you're going to sell it on work for equity. We still got to find the deal. What's your top favorites going on right now? Love it. Because of the market where it's at, you're not going to find those deals on the MLS. It's going to be far and few. It's going to be finding a needle in a haystack. So I would say to keep brother. Amen. <laughs> So this is what directly to the time that we're in right now. So I love that the fact that this may not be the strategy five years from now. It's okay. But right now, the strategy is you have to get them off market. How do we get them off market? I simply you know tell everybody what off market means. Yeah, off market means it simply hasn't been brought to public knowledge through a real estate agent and put on the MLS. It's literally I'm marketing to the whole state of Utah saying, Hey, my name's Cody, and I do this through a postcard. This is simple, guys. Here's some instant value that I'll give free of charge. I'm not going to charge a thing for it. It's simply just a postcard that says handwriting, right? Like it's like a handwritten postcard. Nothing fancy. It's not going to be like a spider placed on it that's upside down dead that people are like, oh, another termite guy that wants to spray my house, and they throw it in the garbage. No, it's not going to be a house with the hands receiving cash. Everyone knows they're getting marketed by a real estate agent. No, no, no. Keep it simple where they have to read the message. Handwritten font and just simply say, my name's Cody. I'm looking to buy your home at 123 Main Street for a cash offer. Reach out me at 801, blah, 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 right? And that's it. And so we get a bunch of phone calls. A lot of them say, go pound sand. A lot of them say swear words on there. And it's okay. I'm fine. Because the one phone call closer to the one that says, guess what? I'm behind on my taxes. I'm behind on my mortgage. Hey, I'm going through divorce. Hey, I uh, have this home that's going through probate. None of us siblings want to touch it because it is horrendous and no one can buy it on the real estate market anyways because it can't qualify for a conventional loan. All of this happens, but you won't get those phone calls if you don't commit to marketing to these individuals. So here's where I would market. With a simple handwritten postcard, this isn't it, but I wanted to show it's so simple that it really should be a, just a simple handwritten card. Uh, but secondly, find a, a very uh, a niche list that shows distress, right? So you're looking for motivated sellers. You're not looking for Jay Connor. I'm not looking for a retail seller. I'm looking for a motivated seller. How I do that is go to like your local city, municipality, county, township, and ask for the tax delinquent list. People that are simply behind on taxes and then send them that postcard and see if they're open for a cash offer on their home. That's as simple as it gets. That's one list that has produced well over a million dollars in the last three years for my company. That one list. Um, that's one. Probate, eviction, code violation. These are all lists that you can get for free from your county, city, township, uh, municipality. These are all free lists that's public information that you can then simply send a postcard to asking if they want to sell their home for cash. Now, when you say code violation, tell our viewers and uh, listeners, what's a, a, an example or two of a code violation? Yeah, in Utah, and it's going to vary maybe from state to state, but in Utah, once it passes X amount, your grass, and it's like now at like 12 inches, the city's like, woo, 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 like cut that down and you're going to get a fine. And so usually it just shows that there's deferred maintenance. And usually you'll find out that that high grass also has a bad roof and a boarded up backyard window. And so code violations can come from boarded up windows. The city doesn't like that. They want windows on there, not boards. Um, it could be that there's four cars parked in the, in, the, in the middle of the lawn when they're supposed to be on concrete in the driveway. Um, there's so many forms of code violations. So if you can get your, a hold of that, 
usually that leads to A, a distressed property and B, a motivated seller. Awesome. Um, before we wrap up, Cody, in my lands, I could talk to you for hours. Mercy. Um, I love the energy and even more so than that. I mean, the, the experience and knowledge that you have gained just in the past three years as of the day of this podcast is amazing.